So hey, hey guys, hey YouTubers, welcome to uh, Western Iowa Tech. This is Ross. He is going to be going through his uh, 750 Shadow Head. We got some pretty cool new way tools. I'm um, using uh, multi-angle cutters. He just got done selecting the pilot. Ross, you want to hold up that pilot? And uh, we're going to start on the intake valves. The pilot selection. Uh, it needs to be a pilot that will fit snugly down into the valve guide but does not bottom out in the valve guide. Now notice what he does next. He puts a small handle into that valve guide. He'll give it a quarter turn while he's pressing down and that will give a sure center and a good seat for that uh, pilot tool. Alright. Okay, the next step for Ross is selecting uh, the 45 degree. These seats, guys, are they're really quite good. There's about uh, 7,500 miles on this particular motor. They are slightly wider than uh, the, the Honda service spec on it, so we're going to be narrowizing these uh, valve seats. But before we narrowize them, he's going to just touch them up, just to uh, clean up those uh, valve seats. So notice the bit on the cutter. We're going to pay close attention to where that is as he slides it down the pilot to make sure that the cutter is straddling the seat. So go ahead and slide that down, Ross. Do not drop it. Yeah, these carbide blades are sh so sharp that if you drop it down that pilot, it will leave dents in there, and then you'll feel a skipping sensation as you, uh, as you turn the, the cutter head. Um, Ross, will you just spin that with your fingers? Now, this combustion area of this particular head is pretty round. Some of the modern motorcycles, the combustion area is not round like this, and the valve will actually be in a pocket, which you have to watch the tips of the cutter head because as it comes around, it may come into contact with that pocket. So after setting up the blades, it's always a good idea to turn that with your fingers to make sure it's not coming into contact with any of the aluminum portion of the head. So again, he's not going to be taking much material off. We're just going to be dressing those up. This is a pretty good shot. You can see uh, the exhaust seat there. There's just some slight pitting in it and there's some slight pitting in the intake seats as well. So that's the reason uh, for, for going through to, to do the, the cutter head on this. So. What I want you to, you won't be able to see in the video, but I want you to make note of this. At the beginning of the cut, he's going to have very light pressure, and I'll call that dwell, and then he's going to apply pressure to it, and you'll actually see the dust from the uh, seat start to get kicked up, a little metal dust, and then at the end of the cut, he's going to dwell again, and then we'll inspect the seat. We'll do this as many times as necessary to come with a clean cut all the way around the seat. So go ahead, Ross, so you can start. Okay, now he's starting to put pressure on it. And then he'll dwell. And then pressure off. Okay, he's going to swing the cutter or the drive motor out of the way so that it doesn't bump the cutter head and give him an opportunity to drop that because remember we said if you drop that it will put marks in the seat now I'm going to put my light on here and hopefully that doesn't drown that out too much let me back that off a little bit alright so you can see the the metal dust from the initial cut and see how, how shiny that seat is this new way just does an incredible job of cutting that now I'm going to step around I'm going to take a close look at that and inspecting for a cut all the way around and that the width of the seat is uh, proportionate all the way around. On motors that have more wear to them, the seat might look like it's been cut more on one side than the other, which uh, happens that uh, sometimes they wear more on one side than the other. Um, be sure and inspect your valve guides if that's the case. All right, Ross, you want to show the, the cutter head and what you just did with the cutter head? Okay, those blades will fill with dust. Move up just a little bit right here. Perfect. 
those blades will fill with dust so when he puts his cutter head back onto the seat if he does not sweep that off that'll get trapped between the cutter head and the seat and it could actually leave a score around there so it's imperative that every time before making another cut you sweep those off and clean those off as well the seat needs to be swept off so he'll use that same broom or compressed air to clean that area up okay the next cut is going to be the top cut Top cuts are typically between 50 and, and 33 degrees. Uh, this particular cutter head is 30 degrees. So Ross is going to slide that down the pilot carefully, and then he's going to check for alignment, again, making sure that he's not coming into contact with the head anywhere, and that the 30 is straddling. Okay, Ross has taken the time to set one carbide blade to the correct depth. His finger's pointing at it right now. So he's going to show you how simple it is to set the depth. After you set the depth on the first one, then you can mimic it with the rest of the blade. So all he's going to do is loosen the set screw, slide it to the depth that he wants, and then tighten the set screw. It. Remember it was making contact with that raised area by the spark plug threads before. There's plenty of clearance now. Yep. Okay. So you also want to make sure that when you slide these cutter blades down, they don't get so far down that they no longer contact just the top part of the seat. If you get, if you slide the cutter head down too far it'll come into contact with the 45 and uh, that's a bad day because before we make the the cut to make the seat narrow we're gonna find out where the seat is hitting the valve face so this is a pretty simple step nothing high-tech involved just a little permanent marker and Ross is gonna mark the entire face of that valve after he gets that done he's gonna slide it down into the head And from here, he's going to rotate it a little bit, and it'll wear the ink off of the area of the seat that's coming into contact with the valve face. Okay, if you notice, the ink is worn off only the top portion of the, of the valve face. Actually, it's worn from about the middle third, clear off the end of the valve, so off the margin. So we know on this that we want to take material off the top of the seat to move that contact area down onto the valve face. The spec for the valve seat width, we need to keep that in mind also, and that is 0.9 to 1.1 millimeters. So Ross, let's measure how wide that valve seat is. You measure the, the width of the valve seat, we'll see how much we have to rind off the top of it. Looks like I'm at a 1.73. 1 1.73 millimeters, so that's outside of the service limit now, and it's outside of the initial setup spec, which is 0.9 to 1.1 millimeters. So we'll get set up with a 30 degree cutter head, put our pilot back in, and cut that valve seat narrower to get it down to the factory spec. Alright, Ross has got everything set up for that uh, 30 degree cut, so he's going to, again, he's going to cut this the same way. He's going to come down and dwell on it, cut it, dwell, and then come off. We'll remeasure and do that as many times necessary until we're at the 0.9 to 1.1 millimeters. Alright, go ahead, Ross. Pressure. Well, off. All right, we are right in the center of the, the spec right now, so 
um, that cut is done. We'll verify that it's making contact at the proper uh, position of the valve face and then move on to the other valves. Right, so as you can see, the, uh, the contact area has been shifted down the face of the valve. We're in the center third of the valve uh, face, which is exactly where we want to be. So that's a really good, uh, really good cut, and uh, got two more holes to go. All right, guys, let's wrap it up in summary. I want to go over a few key points. First thing, before you uh, start working on it, make sure you get safety. Um, you only get two eyes. Save them for the rest of your life. Flip down the visors, put your safety glasses on, be safe out there. Um, decarbon the combustion chamber. Some different uh, theories out there. Some guys are uh, glass beads, um, wire brush, whatever you do. Just make sure that you're thorough about cleaning the combustion chamber uh, to eliminate the possibilities of any of those carbon deposits turning into hot spots, which could lead to pre-ignition. You've got to depart. Let's do the job right. Um, determine the angles that you're going to be cutting. Uh, of the heads that we just got done uh, cutting in this unit, we uh, did some Suzuki stuff, some Honda stuff, Yamaha stuff. The top angle cut was from 15 to 33 degrees on all of those. Um, so there, therefore that range of the top cut. Um, all of the seats that we did were 45. Uh, I do know that there's some 46 angle seat cuts, interference uh, seats. Um, but everything that we did was uh, 45 degrees, so we knew that ahead of time. And then uh, the bottom cuts, uh, 60 degrees. So make sure you have that, the angles of the cutter heads that you're going to be using. Um, we cut the 45 first. I know that there's, uh, there's some school of thought to cut the other angles first. Most of the seats that we were doing we were just dressing up. It was not a major, um, major malfunction on the motorcycle. We just had it apart. We wanted to make it, uh, make it new again. So we cut the 45, just dusted that off basically, and then uh, determined where it was contacting on the valve itself. Most of the time, this is just generic, but most of the time you're looking for that center third for your contact area on your valve face. If it is riding high on the valve, cut the top cut, that will move the contact area down. Make sure you maintain the manufacturer's width of the seat while you're shifting that around. And in the same token, if that seat would have been contacting too low on the surface area, we would have cut it with the 60 to bring that seat back up, which you, when you bring it up, you move it up on the valve face. So just be conscious of where it's making a contact. There's a product called Prussian Blue, which a lot of uh, engine builders will use for the valve faces. Great product. We use Magic Marker in the, in the video, which is very accessible. Um, and. Uh, still gives us the, the uh, contact area, which is the main thing that we were looking for. So after uh, making the narrowing cuts, ensure that it's in that spec. Most of the uh, heads that we were doing, smaller valves, it was 9 tenths to 1.1 millimeter. So we wanted to make sure that we hit that range. The seats will get wider as the motor wears, so keep that in mind. You might want to go closer to that 9 tenths area. Um, as far as lapping valves, guys, make sure you read the specific owner's manual. So if it's a Stellite or a nitrate coated uh, valve, you're not going to want to lap it. This new way cutter system that, uh, that we've used, the seats are incredible. I hope that shows up well for you in the video, but you can see uh, it almost looks like a, a mirrored finish on there. They're just really nice seats. A few uh, moments of running in and any imperfections are taken up. Um, one thing that we didn't show on the video that you might want to try, carburetor cleaner or contact brake cleaner. You, as a liquid test, you can squirt that into the port, cover the valve head after the uh, head has been reassembled. You shouldn't have any leakage coming through there. Um, if there is a little bit, you may want to tap on that valve to open and close the valve under spring pressure to uh, help to seat that in. I hope this uh, uh, is educational for you and you're able to apply that and uh, keep building, guys.